Hello everyone, this is the Illuminati Watcher, Isaac Weishaupt. Normally I stick to symbolism and conspiracy theories revolving around our entertainment. And today I'm going to veer slightly off course and we're going to talk politics. Because this year in particular, it actually shares a lot of commonalities with the entertainment business for manipulation and deception. As a disclaimer, I'd like to first say that I am in no way advocating for one particular candidate. I am just merely demonstrating a conspiracy theory in action as I see from my perspective. So let's get into the Illuminati's false choice of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and the conspiracies behind it. First let's talk about the Hegelian dialect. This is the false choices that we are being presented with. This idea or theory is that the puppet masters, aka the Illuminati, are coordinating false events and using it in a, uh, a formula to get us to do what they want us to do. This is the idea of the thesis, reaction, antithesis, and synthesis, or more eloquently described by David Icke as the problem, reaction, solution method. I talked about this several years ago in my first book, A Grand Unified Conspiracy Theory, and today we're seeing it in full force because I believe we are being coerced to vote for Hillary Clinton. The way this works first, the Illuminati put Barack Obama in as president. This is your thesis or problem. Uh, we know this because it was a coordinated effort between Obama and Clinton when they arranged this in 2008 at a Bilderberg meeting. Now most of you know the Bilderberg meeting is our uh, alleged conspiracy meeting place for the Illuminati. Well anyways, after only days after this 2008 meeting, Clinton dropped out of the primaries and Obama proceeded to win the presidential office. What was curious about this was on June 5th of 2008, uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, they mysteriously disappeared for several hours where reporters could not get in touch with them or find them. The allegation is that Clinton was made this offer where she would let Obama win the first presidency, she would become the Secretary of State, and then she would be placed in the White House in 2017. In order for them to make this happen, in 2016, we must first see the other option, Donald Trump, as the Republican nominee, and he is the antithesis or reaction for those that disliked Obama, which was the original problem, quote unquote. And then they proceed to show us all kinds of crazy political incorrectness from Trump, which only further drives the wedge to make people choose Clinton because she is the quote unquote safe candidate. This is uh, more motivation to follow along with their antithesis and giving us the false solution or synthesis. Now, intuitively speaking, think about how many Republicans dislike Donald Trump and how many Democrats distrust Hillary Clinton, yet these two are the candidates that shook out in the end. The masses are being sold on the idea that Hillary Clinton will be the first woman to be the president, uh, and the truth is that she is not the first female candidate running for office. This has happened many years prior. All the way back to 1872, Victoria Woodhull of the suffrage movement ran for presidency. Uh, 1972, we had Shirley Chrisholm, actually for the Democratic Party. And in fact, this year and even in the last election, Jill Stein, the third party candidate, is running. Now, in order for the Democratic Party to get Hillary Clinton as the nominee, they first needed to silence the Bernie Sanders movement. Now, Bernie Sanders was an uh, independent party for many years, but decided to run the Democratic ticket because he understood that the two-party uh, system is rigged such that only the Republicans and the Democrats get the exposure. So, unbeknownst to Hillary Clinton and her campaign, Bernie was actually very successful at energizing the Democratic base and pulling third-party independents over to the left. Sanders was able to play on Clinton's uh uh, people's distrust for Clinton. He kept pointing out her questionable speeches that she was giving to Wall Street businesses like Goldman Sachs, the ones who uh, helped crash our economy, and then we proceeded to bail them out. Uh, we also saw that the mainstream media was favoring Clinton and Trump this entire time, giving them more airtime and publicity than all the other candidates. Now, some even claim that the Bernie Sanders delegates were suppressed during the national convention as well. And while some claim this a conspiracy theory, the truth came out on WikiLeaks' uh, emails 
that showed that the Democratic National Committee and its chair, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, enabled the downfall of Bernie Sanders. If you read through the emails and the comments, you can see that they were obviously setting Bernie Sanders up to fall when they were trying to stage people in there to ask questions about his religion and try to make it sound like he was an atheist. All of these things were being used to ramp up pressure for Bernie Sanders to drop out of the race. Now let's take a look at Donald Trump. He's being called the candidate of chaos, and we will talk about that later towards the end of the video, where we find that that actually has its ties with the occultism of the Illuminati. But first let's talk about some of the crazy things he's been saying and doing, which I believe is part of the agenda to make people drive the wedge to be forced to choose Hillary Clinton as the safe candidate. First, some claim that he was suggesting to assassinate Hillary Clinton when he talked about uh, to some folks about abolishing the Second Amendment. And by the way, and if she gets to pick, if she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know, but. Next, Donald Trump signs a pledge promising that if he became president, he would enforce laws against pornography. He's apparently cracking down on porn, although his wife posed nude in GQ magazine, and he himself was on the cover of Playboy. He is saying that he wants to crack down and ban porn. Now, if you look at the statistics, you'll find that at least 70% of men watch it as well as 30% of women. So if you want to disenfranchise most of the American population, say you want to get rid of one of their favorite pastimes. Next, in the Trump of chaos, he talks about the, uh, he makes the comments about Latinos and Mexicans, saying that they're rapists. Uh, you've heard a lot of the stuff he claims that they were bringing in drugs and crime. When the, uh, the truth about it all is that when you look at the data Washington posted, they found that the data on immigrants and crime show that there's no evidence to support that immigrants commit more crimes than native-born Americans, and in fact, first-generation immigrants are predisposed to lower crime rates than the native-born Americans. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Next, he had to uh, disrespect the military veterans. He claimed that he raised and donated $6 million, with $1 million coming out of his own pocket to a veteran group. But then the Washington Post investigated it, and the truth came out that that did not happen. So after the fact, he cut a check to make it, make it right, but... The fact remains that he lied about it. He was also eligible to serve during the Vietnam, but he received four educational deferments when he was in college and one medical deferment for uh, some problem with his heels. And then he went further and criticized Vietnam, Vietnam uh, prisoner of war John McCain. Furthermore, he also disrespected a U.S. Army captain and his family when the uh, Captain Khan died in Iraq from a car bomb serving our country, and he claimed that his family sacrificed nothing for his country. Meanwhile, claiming that Donald Trump himself was uh, actually sacrificed much for our country and built great businesses and hired thousands of people and so on. The uh, disabled or handicapped also took a jab from Donald Trump when he mocked a reporter, Sergei Kovaleski, who has a congenital joint condition, and proceeded to mock him on television. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I, oh, maybe that's what I said. This is 14 years ago. He still, they didn't do a retraction. Trump is known for many sexist remarks. Uh, the Telegraph put together a whole list of remarks he's made over the past 30 years. Uh, Donald Trump, of course, owned the Miss USA and Miss Universe pageants for different periods of time. And some of the contestants have been vocal about his mistreatment and objectification of women. 
He was claimed to have been asking the men to rate the women, and he would go down the line and ask the guys, who's the most beautiful on the women's team? And a, uh, a, a financial advisor once said, I think it was most uncomfortable when he had one female contestant come around the board table and twirl around. Now let's get into some of the more meatier accusations here. Not that the ones prior weren't bad. Um, but there's one that is the secret truth here is that the Trump family and the Clintons are actually friends. Yes, in 2005, Trump married his third wife and the Clintons attended and sat in the front row. Then in 2009, Trump donated $100,000 to the Clinton Foundation, which has its own host of allegations. Weeks before Donald Trump decided to campaign for the Republican nomination, he may very well have been nudged by another politician that was indeed wise for making this suggestion. Now, who was this politician, you may ask? It's Bill Clinton. The Washington Post reported on this in 2015 when they said that the former president, Bill Clinton, had a private telephone conversation in spring with Donald Trump. And at the exact same time, Donald Trump had not yet come out, but was considering running for the nomination. Now, earlier we talked about the uh, Obama and Clinton Bilderberg meeting. Well, back in 2008, Hillary Clinton ran for candidacy, obviously, with Debbie Wasserman Schultz as her campaign co-chair. Now, the chair of the Democratic, Democratic National Committee at this time was Tim Kaine, who actually stepped down in 2011 and transferred the position over to Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So in 2016, we see Debbie Wasserman Schultz's DNC ensuring that Clinton would win the nomination when we saw all the WikiLeaks emails that we talked about earlier and all the strategies they were using to make sure that she got in there. So Clinton wins the nomination and then she chooses Tim Kaine as the vice president. Now talking a little bit about Hillary Clinton, people are making a fuss over her health and theories that she has actual body doubles out there campaigning. And you know, I don't know what's wrong with Hillary Clinton, but you can see that there's something visibly going on here. I don't know if it's seizures or Parkinson's or what it is, but she's not telling anyone about this, which only adds to the distrust for Hillary Clinton. Some theorists claim that she is MK Ultra mind control slaved, uh, but you know I don't know. Maybe that is. Maybe it's not. Maybe she's a robot. Maybe she's a clone, a drone. I don't know. Could be a body double. Teresa, Teresa Barnwell is claimed to be her body double, and there's people saying that she is using her on the campaign trail. Now, one of the darker conspiracies here is that Trump and Clinton both went to the. The Orgy Island via the Lolita Express. Now, if you haven't heard of this, there's a billionaire named Jeffrey Epstein who has allegations of all these uh, organized sexual child abuse surrounding him. There's smoke, and where there's smoke, it's worthy of an investigation. It's no secret that former President Bill Clinton had a friendly relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, a prominent businessman who went to jail as part of a plea deal he reached while being investigated amid allegations he was a pedophile who had sex with scores of underage girls and used his staff to procure the victims. Previous accounts stated Clinton flew with Epstein on his private jet 11 times. A jet accuser say was equipped for sex with underage victims and was used to travel to Epstein's private island, nicknamed Orgy Island. Newly obtained documents show Clinton actually took at least 26 flights on Epstein's private jet to spots around the globe, though apparently not after Epstein's plea deal and jail time. On at least five occasions that they did travel together, Secret Service did not accompany Clinton. The Daily Beast reported that in 2008, Epstein was convicted of soliciting sex from an underage girl and quietly paid settlements to scores of alleged victims who said he serially molested them. And then the girls kept coming out. And in 2014, another young woman filed a lawsuit claiming that Epstein used her as a sex slave for his powerful friends and that she had been at parties at the private island with former President Bill Clinton. And then, after all of that... Another lawsuit came from a Jane Doe in New York that accused Epstein and Donald Trump of raping her at a series of sex parties when she was only 13. Now, the lawsuit, as of this video, has been dropped against Trump 
because they were waiting for another eyewitness to join Jane Doe. Donald Trump denies any of these allegations, obviously. But what's interesting here is that it gives clout to the theory presented by Kathy O'Brien in Transformation of America. In the book she wrote about her time spent as an MK Ultra mind control sex slave for the elitists and even politicians and presidents. It'll be curious to see how this shakes out in the debates and onward with the allegations flying left and right. There'll be more to come for sure. Now let's talk about Hillary Clinton being the goddess of sacrifice. The infamous hacker, Guccifer, wrote a letter to Fox News and implicated Hillary Clinton as the goddess of occult rituals uh, because he talked about how he was trying to expose the Illuminati and he claimed that Hillary Rodham Diane Clinton is one of the high priests, a goddess of this occult satanic shadow group. Now what makes this interesting is that several years ago, Clinton received an email that within the traffic of the email, they made an odd mention of animal sacrifice. Now this was uh, again part of the WikiLeaks reveal and the email was dated August 29th, 2008. And one of Clinton's staff ends the email saying, with fingers crossed, the old rabbit's foot out of the box in the attic, I will be sacrificing a chicken in the backyard to Moloch. Now, most of you already know Moloch. That is the deity that the Mesopotamians and the uh, Canaanites were sacrificing their sons and daughters to. And allegedly, this continues to this day. We see this kind of thing at the Bohemian Grove with the owl statue, which would be the Minerva statue. Uh, same concept. They do this cremation of care ceremony. And again, it's all the finest elites, politicians, celebrities, and entertainers all hanging out at this boys club, doing a little mock sacrifice to the owl. Nothing weird here, though, right? So finally, let's talk about the most interesting aspect of this that I found is that Donald Trump is being called the candidate of chaos. Now, this is important for a couple of reasons when we talk about Illuminati symbolism and conspiracy theories. Uh, one in particular is the practice of ceremonial magic. One flavor of the magic is called chaos magic. And again, it's this idea of this occult practice of manipulating reality based on beliefs of tying into some kind of global field of energy that is accessible to only those that are trained and in the know. And when you research the Illuminati, you'll find that they've been obsessed with this idea and this concept of ritual magic since the days of ancient Egypt with the god of magic Thoth, who's also known as Hermes Trismegistus. Basically summed up, it's the idea that they want to conform reality and the universe according to their will and their desires. This is a concept I talked about in my interpretation of Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. And in the book, I talk about how it is the same thing as Aleister Crowley's will, as in do what thou wilt. Now, another theory on the Illuminati comes from Greg Hill and Carrie Thornley's Principia Discordia, where they talk about the Illuminati's secret desires to worship Ares, a.k.a. Discordia, who is the goddess of chaos. So again, we're talking about Donald Trump, the candidate of chaos, and the Illuminati worshipping Discordia, the goddess of chaos. Now here's where it gets very interesting, and it ties back to the original Hegelian dialect I was talking about earlier. In the Principia Discordia, there are three principles. The first is the aneuristic principle, and that is the principle of order. And I believe that the candidate for this would be Hillary Clinton. They also have the heuristic principle, which is the principle of disorder or chaos. Obviously, that's Donald Trump. And then you've got the third principle, and that is that they are both illusions. I think that is precisely what we're seeing this year. Another tie-in we can consider is that the tarot card deck, which is, again, another occult practice, typically. Aleister Crowley designed one of the most popular versions, after all. Uh, the tarot card deck holds certain cards that are the major arcana or the trump cards. Now, one of these trump cards is number 16, and it is the chaos card or the tower card. 
It was originally called the Chaos cards in the more traditional decks. Uh, the more modern ones are called Tower cards. Now, this card is said to cause feelings of fear and anxiety because it depicts upheaval and sudden change. Another explanation of the tarot card for the tower or chaos is that as with the death card and devil card, this tends to cause the greatest amount of concern. However, unlike the latter two, the tower card really is one that offers a warning. The tower card shows a tower that is built on false beliefs and lies. Although you may not realize it now, things are going to change. So, when we see Donald Trump telling lies and false beliefs, he is embodying this card. So we see that this Trump card of chaos, aka the Trump Tower card, is number 16. And then obviously you've got Donald Trump and the actual Donald Trump Tower, all combined with the election year, which is 2016. See how these all tie together nicely? Uh, we know that the Illuminati are obsessed with rituals, numbers, numerology, that kind of thing. And the symbolism here all fits perfectly, with Donald Trump being the chaos candidate and Hillary Clinton being the candidate of order. So what, what do I think we should do? Um, you know, to me it seems like Donald Trump is trying to make people dislike him. Like, he doesn't even want to be the president. He's trying to force people to vote for Clinton. This is a... Uh, the problem, reaction, solution, the Hegelian dialect in, in action. Hillary Clinton herself said it. She said that Donald Trump was not a normal presidential candidate. Someone who attacks everybody has something missing. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to get into that. Well, I believe I do know what it is. I think it's part of the agenda. I think this is all part of the Hegelian dialect. And I think the way out of this is by considering third party candidates. Yes, you will tell your co-workers and friends that you will vote for a third-party candidate and they will immediately try to corral you back in line by telling you you are throwing your vote away or the, the better one is that you're actually giving a vote for, you know, the opposite party. Uh, you know, last I checked, the Constitution works just like this. This is democracy. And I'm not going to listen to social programming. I think you should vote with your conscience. If you like Trump, by all means, vote for Trump. If you like Clinton, maybe you don't love... Uh, some of the things she says, but you can stand for a few of them, then by all means, go for it. But to me, it seems like the only way out of this system of control is by considering the third-party candidates. We have to consider them, we have to vote for them, because guess what? If everybody votes for a third-party candidate, now we've got three actual parties to consider and choose from, instead of picking from the same two that we are told to vote for. Now, if you like this video, check the description. I've got a link for an article on my website, IlluminatiWatcher.com. And while you're there, you can check out my true passion, which is uh, Illuminati and occult symbolism hidden in our pop culture and entertainment. When you get on IlluminatiWatcher.com, you will find a sign up for a free email newsletter. Plunk in your email and you will automatically unlock the archives and you'll get all kinds of cool deals on books that I've written. Uh, I oftentimes give away free downloads when I first release a new book. I've got several of them on my shop page. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I got lots of cool videos uh, on all these conspiracy theories embedded in our entertainment and how the Illuminati are trying to manipulate us. Thanks again. This is Isaac from IlluminatiWatcher.com.